What's up everybody? I thought I'd give you a shot of the gym. This is a, a third time I've tried to make this video because I keep messing it up. So uh, I thought I would show you kind of the new style and then I kind of have a little list of do's and don'ts I think might be valuable to people as you build your gym. The, uh, so if you can see what I, if you look over on my YouTube videos, you can see how my gym has changed throughout time. We do have this kind of nice big shop. So it was, as the gym started, it was just the back corner and it's slowly grown to encompass all this equipment. We originally had no cardio, no, no dumbbells. It was just the rack and the weights. And over time it's grown. And what happens, it got very disorganized. Things got scattered and I finally got fed up. And so I decided to just run it all down one lane of this one bay of this shop and then to free up this now if we need to pull a car or some equipment or something on this side there's not really any shuffling or cleaning that has to be done it can be pulled right in and so just to show you from over here uh it opened up a lot of room and i thought it was more respectful to you know of, of those sharing the space to make sure that this lane was available if they needed it because other people use this space too. This is a shared shop by three families, all my family. Um, so I thought I'd show that. And I wanted to take you through a little bit of growth and a little bit of do's and don'ts that I think are kind of important as I started to think about how this grew. Uh, the first do's and don'ts, I think the do's is to, you know, plan your flooring out. Um, apologize if the wind's blowing here. Uh, the, you know, I do have a plywood underlayment with a uh, horse stall mats. And I definitely do not regret doing that. I think it's worth the money. I know the plywood's an extra cost. The horse stall mats are an extra cost, but the plywood protects your concrete. If you're dropping big weights, you know, if you can screw your equipment in and use some small screws and it keeps things in place, I think it's worth it. Just don't buy the three quarter inch because my goodness, it is uh, expensive. Uh, I kick myself because I bought the three quarter inch a couple, three years ago, back when it was cheap. And I went to expand out to the rest of the bay and to keep it level, I had to buy the same. And it went from 32 to $35 a sheet to $65 a sheet. And I about had a heart attack. The uh, horse stall mats are actually the same price as when I bought them about two years ago. In terms of, these are from Tractor Supply. Uh, they're like 42 to $45 a piece um, for, I think they're a four by six. And those are, those haven't changed in price, I was surprised. One thing I do want to say is there is, you do get what you paid for. These are my originals and I bought these from a company online and they're much better quality. Um, they're just put together so much better. The, 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 uh, if you look, the, uh, the tractor supply ones, they, cr they kind of crumble in the corners. The, the sheen, you can see little parts where the sheen is off. They're just not uniform. They're not perfectly square. These are really square. Um, they're just better mats all around, but they were $500 to ship just for that original area. And I just am not going to do that again. So we went with something a little cheaper, more convenient, and I was able to go pick them up at my tractor supply. Uh, so we bought those. I think it's worth it. Do that Buy the good mats if you can, because I do think that those are worth it. Next, uh, I want to show you that, you know, plan your, plan your weights. So originally we bought, I think I had bought eight plates, eight 45s. I bought four 25s. I think I originally bought four 10s or something and four, two 35s. And then that was it. And we just grew. And, and that's because we have three or four people sometimes working out in here at the same time. And we grew into things. And it turns out when you have your own home gym, you're gonna have a base weight for a lot of things and you're going to want to keep your weights there so like for instance the rhino we never go under that weight so those two plates are going to stay there well those kind of go there now so we don't use them for anything else or uh, over here we keep some plates over here because we can it's our gym and it's kind of our base weight so they don't get moved around you may end up using more weights because you're just going to keep some at a particular piece of equipment so plan for that i wanted to show this uh, I bought some extra Rogue, some Rogue competition. The original ones I bought were Rogue competition weights. Then I bought more later, and I thought I would show you the difference. So these are the originals, and you can see how this stuff is inset. 
Sorry, you can hear my dad on the skid steer back there. That's that noise. But you can see how these are nice and inset and the lip is smaller versus when I bought these, I wasn't paying attention. They're not competition waist, they're still calibrated, but you can see this is just painted on. It's not inset like this one is. There's an actual lip where this has been carved out of the, the, the rubber and this is just painted on. Also, this lip is bigger, it's thicker versus this one but it's not more prominent and it's harder to grab. These are actually, my, everyone thinks these are easier to grab because uh, of the lip and the inset letters. Um, it gives you something for your hands to grab onto. Rogue does not make these actually very easy to hold onto. I thought I would say that about those weights. Um, something else I do think is important that I wanna say is a don't, is don't buy, I mean, Rogue doesn't make this wingspan anymore. It, it, almost no one bought it. And uh, I can see why. If I had it to do over again, I would have bought two squat racks and a bench press rack because having things modular is actually better. Because then as your gym grows or changes, it's easier to move stuff around versus I have this big thing to contend with and it's an odd shape and it's just hard for me to move around. So uh, I wish I had things more modular. It would have been, it, it would have just been better as, as we grow to have more options to save space or utilize the space. So consider that as you grow, you're probably gonna prefer more options in terms of modular use. Also, it's easier to resell smaller things and just keep that in mind. I also wanted to say the Rhino, it, it, you don't need it until you do. And we, we ordered it originally because my brother wanted it because he was having back problems at the time. And as I threw out my shoulder and tore my rotator cuff, and as if we've had hip problems and lower back problems over time, that rhino becomes pretty invaluable if you want to continue using your legs and whatnot because it does save your shoulder when you can't, when your shoulder is so bad you can't hold a squat bar behind you. Well, now you can use the rhino. Or if your lower back's out, you can use the rhino and still work your legs. And so I think it's a valuable piece of equipment. A lot of times we neglect it when you're feeling good and you're feeling strong on squats, you don't need it. But man, when you do need it, it's invaluable. Also, you can do curls on it. We do curls. I do single arm curls on it, do double arm curls on it, do upright rows on it. So there's lots of things you can do on it. I trained a, someone not too long ago who broke his arm. He needed to be able to do some squats, came in here, we were able to use this because his arm was broken. He couldn't use squat bar. So that's something to, to remember um, as you grow. Something else, so we bought all these dumbbells and it's nice to have, but I can say the cost of these versus Rogue has those new kind of modular dumbbells. They're almost like a mini barbell where you can add those little mini weights. If you can afford to add those little, to do that system, man, I highly recommend it because the dumbbells are expensive, first of all. I mean, you're gonna eat up a ton of cost in these, but also they're huge to store and storing them is expensive. Just, I mean, I held off on that Rogue dumbbell rack right there for two years I wanted to buy it, but I just could not, see myself spending 750 bucks on a rack to hold dumbbells. And then I just finally got so tired of being on the floor, I did it. But you're not just out the cost when you have a rack for dumbbells, or dumbbells, just the, the cost of the dumbbells. You have the cost of the racks to hold them in the space. And Rogue has those new ones that are, you just, they're like little tiny mini dumbbells. And if you can afford those, just do those and save yourself a ton of space. I feel like it's a much better option. Um, so I thought I'd say that because if I had to do over again, if I could trade these, I probably would. Uh, the one thing, I mean, you can get multiple people working out multiple weights, but you, uh, and so I guess maybe you'd have to spend a little more on the other dumbbells and I guess you can't do drop sets easily with those, but the saving sacrifice, is pretty big. I'm not going to lie. This is a lot of space and a lot of money, um, for these. I just think that maybe that's be a little better. Uh, something else I want to say is these plyo boxes, I think are worth their, worth every dime. Uh, these, and they're the polymer plyo boxes. They're so awesome. We use them for everything. I mean, step ups, just to sit on. Um, I mean, the girls actually use that small one to be able to reach stuff. They use those little step stool a lot. Um, we use them all the time. Uh, if you want to set dumbbells on something and you don't want to tear up your leather, then you can set your dumbbells on those. They, we just use them all the time. They're actually nice little platforms. I highly recommend them. They're, you use them a lot more than you think you will. And they actually stack on, stack on top of each other so you can save some space if you need to. 
uh, let me look at my list here. Um, oh, get a ton of band pegs. So if you look around our gym, I think we have about 20 band pegs. If you look around, you use them a lot and they're great little storage savers. You put everything on them. You know, I actually use, put my safety squat bar up here and I use them band pegs to hold it in place. Um, they're very valuable, we use them all the time. If you have a garage gym, get some metal sheeting. First of all, it's gonna protect your drywall. Put it over your drywall, but then you can add these magnets. These are 50 pound magnets. And now you can just stick stuff all over your wall with magnets and hang it. Man, that's a great way to save space. Protect your drywall from getting damaged if you drop your weights, which you're probably gonna do. If you look, we've got dings all along the bottom of ours. And you're gonna protect your drywall, but also you're gonna have this great way to have storage and hang stuff from your wall because magnets, magnets work. Um, let's see here. Plow boxes, everything modular. Um, we talked about the, the, the bumpers. So uh, something else I wanted to say is don't be disorganized. So as you grow your gym, you know, plan out how to organize it. Originally, we were just, we were taking up two garage bays when we needed to take up one. And so be organized in what you're doing because it's going to pay dividends later. It's going to help you to be more efficient in your workouts. It's also going to help you to have more clarity in what you want to do. It's going to make things look better, obviously, but you're also going to be able to save a lot of space. Plan ahead. Um, you know, something that, that I've done just to show you behind these TVs is something I always do. I, I ran this plug and I ran some ethernet um, to this TV because I want it to look clean. I don't want to see the wires. And if that's extra time and maybe extra money, if you don't know how to do it, um, it's easily done. Just look it up. And same thing over here, this TV. I wanted things to look right. I ran a conduit. No attaching it to the junction box. I had to run conduit down. I had to run the ethernet and everything. But now it's so nice to have TVs that, these smart TVs that we can use uh, and everything looks clean. I don't have wires hanging everywhere. It's worth the time to be prepared. Put your plugs where you need them. Put your, I'm gonna move this shelf soon. This is gonna get moved because now it's not an organized place. And um, so try to be organized. It. I can tell you having your own home gym, it's hard to keep clean. You don't realize how much you're, if you're, if you have a good gym that you go to, they spend a lot of time keeping things clean. And that takes a long time and a lot of time, a lot of resources. And so it takes a lot to keep it clean. And if you have this home gym and you're able to open your garage doors and breathe in the great air, which is so amazing and awesome to be able to work out almost outside, it blows in the dirt, it blows in the leaves, it blows in the, all the stuff. And so you are gonna spend some time keeping it clean. Get yourself a big trash can. You need a big trash can in your gym. You'd be surprised you generate trash. Have somewhere to put your trash. Another thing I would think I wanted to say to buy is have a shop vac. Nothing uncovers dirt like a black floor. You see it all. It doesn't hide anything. The dog hair that from our dogs coming and working out, or work, they're working out, they come to our workouts. Um, just the, the dirt from your shoes that you track in, the chalk, the everything, it, it, it uncovers it all. Get a good shot back, you're gonna need it. You're gonna like being able to keep your stuff clean and suck up all the dirt or the cobwebs or whatever blows in, invest in a good shot back. Um, uh, the other thing I can say that we've done, the TVs. You can buy TVs off Facebook for 50 bucks a lot of times. People are just giving them away. Um, you know, these are, these are not expensive TVs. Throw a Chromecast on there, throw a Fire Stick on there. Now you got a smart TV and you move on. You don't need to have, you can put TVs all over your gym for cheap. You don't need thousand dollar TVs. Just buy some 50 bucks, $50 ones off of Facebook. It's worth uh, having these TVs and not paying a lot of money. Um, your gym equipment, you know, is your cardio equipment. Go to a gym and test it out. See if you want to buy it. Uh, I mean, cost is, is, is expensive. This stuff starts running, it starts costing a lot, but you can go test it out at a gym uh, for the most part. I would say everything but the Stairmaster. Um, Stairmasters are so hard to come by and they are so expensive. Oh my goodness, they're expensive. Uh, but a lot of this other stuff, you can go try out, see if you like it. Some of it's a low risk 
attempt you can try, but uh, I think you should, you can definitely go try your equipment out somewhere before you want to buy it and see if you like it. Um, so uh, something else I wanted to show you was we have this old stereo. This is not a new stereo. This is probably a 12 to 15 year old stereo. It doesn't have Bluetooth. So I bought a little thing from Monoprice that has an eighth inch jack out and it connects Bluetooth to that, goes into the auxiliary end of this old stereo. And that's been our stereo for three years. And um, we haven't had anything fancy. It's nice and loud, but uh, you can make little things work. That little modular thing right there was 15 bucks. And now we added Bluetooth to the stereo and that's plenty for what we needed. Um, think of little tools like that where you don't have to spend a lot of money to make something work. You can figure it out. You know, if you go look at my uh, trolley arm video, the trolley arms were getting, we were using the, the weight stops, the, the arms, these things over here to set our trolley arms on. These things up here. We actually don't use them much anymore. But we were setting the trolley arms on those. And they were scratching up the trolley arms. And we came up with a $2 solution that, that fixed all of it. I mean, and rather than seeking, you know, people were suggesting I buy four feet of plyometric boxes for each trolley arm. Spend $500, $700 on trolley arms or on boxes. And I'm not going to do that. I found a $2 solution. So be creative. Um, you know, be, you know, be in, have some ingenuity, uh, for things. Think of things like use bands for stuff. We use this band for hamstring curls. If you haven't tried a band like that for hamstring curls and laid on a bench and tried to curl them, they will light you up. I promise you, um, little things like that are super smart. Um, so th this is how our gym has grown. I wanted to show it. Uh, you can go back and see the beginning videos and see how kind of things have migrated. And if you have the space, um, what you can do. We, I've gotten a couple kind of what I think are kind of rude comments about the money situation of what this takes. And the one thing I do want to say is this is a three-family gym. And my, my brother's family, my parents, we all live out here on this homestead. And we all contribute money to this. And I think when I first did this gym, I think I had, I mean, I think I had $20,000 saved up. That I'd saved up over a lot of time. And I used that $20,000 as our initial investment. So that was $20,000 that I'd saved for years, you know, and kind of added to that pile of money. So that got us started. And then we've kind of added to it, you know, it was three families over the years. So keep that in mind when you think about, you know, pe people have commented on how much money this would take. Well, I I'm not going to lie and say we're incredibly blessed. I know this is expensive. I know what we have is rare and um, I'm not going to deny any of that. And I'm going to tell you, I'm very appreciative of it. And you know, to prove how appreciative of it, I use this thing nearly every day. And so do other people. Um, we don't let it go to waste. Uh, we certainly take advan full advantage of this gym. Uh, every, every inch of it is used. So that's how much, how appreciative our, we are of it is we tend to use it a lot, but you know, we weren't given, given this gym and we earned it and there's three families contributing to it. And so keep in mind, as you see what you see, remember that it would be a third as big and a third as much if this was one family. You're just seeing it on my YouTube, but there's two other families putting money in this pot and contributing. And we're lucky to all be in agreement and on that this is a good investment for us. But uh, I just want to say that because I think it's worth being said. It's worth knowing that, that uh, this is a, a multifamily investment into our health and being able to do stuff uh, and have a fun hobby. Um, uh, a lot of people have asked, you know, what's the cost? And I don't know for sure what we've spent. I would say amount around fifty to sixty thousand dollars in equipment on to, uh, from A to Z. Um, uh, so that's about what it is. You can obviously, if you want to know what stuff costs now, just go look it up. But in terms of what I paid, I the weights, the racks, and everything, I'm assuming they're worth twenty percent more now than when I bought them because the cost of everything from COVID has gone so far up. Uh, funny story, when COVID hit, we had we have friends who are bodybuilders. We have friends who are kind of athletes and power lifters and whatnot. But we've just been in the game long enough that, uh, sorry, the wind's blowing over here. Um, 
they were offering us a hundred bucks of workouts, come down here and work out in our gym during COVID. Uh, which is pretty amazing that we had people wanting to just come spend a couple hours here and give us a hundred bucks, uh, to be able to get a workout in. And that's also, <laughs> that's also how addicted a lot of people are to the game, but it's kind of funny. Um, I put a list of things together. I'm going to go through this. So, you know, as your gym grows, what is, why do we do this? Why is it worth it? And I think that, you know, I mean, every, so a lot of it's obvious, um, but I thought I wanted to go through as you build your personal gym, as we built ours, what we have seen, and maybe some of this is something you wouldn't think about, but why we do this, why it's worth it. Um, you know, first of all, obviously I don't pay gym fees. My wife doesn't pay gym fees. My family doesn't pay gym fees. My friends who work out come here, don't pay gym fees. None of us pay those fees. So 50, 60 bucks a month, probably maybe more if you include what we would pay in childcare, what you would include, um, it, j- just in those things, let's say really probably a hundred bucks a month right there per family that we save, but that doesn't include the drive time. That doesn't include the locker room time. That doesn't include all the time that we save not having to be in a personal gym, a personal or in a public gym, uh, a business. We save so much time. We can, we change at our house. We walk 45 second walk from our house to here to the shop and can work out ourselves. I mean, that's a time, time is money. Man, there's so much to do and so much going on. Time is money. And to be able to get down here quick and not have to drive 10, 15 minutes to a gym and then 10, 15 minutes back and lose that drive time, man, that's a lot if time is money. And we save that time. Well, it's easy to get in here on a weekend. Also, we never wait. Think about this. We never wait on equipment. I mean, we may, we may occasionally collide if there's something specific we want to do when there's multiple people working out. But I'm going to say that's like once or twice a year. Where, where that's actually happening, where we, I have to wait on something. It never happens. We just, we have everything. And, and, you know, I can work out with my brother and we'll work out the same body parts. And it's so much fun. We can crank up the music the way we want to crank it up and not have to worry about where, what other people want to listen to. We can turn on whatever sports thing is on, on the TVs and watch them and get our workout in. Crank the music and have golf on. And watch what we want to watch. We don't have to watch what other people want to watch. Uh, I come down here and sit, you know, when, during the winter time, uh, get on the treadmill and watch TV, watch movies. I can watch the movies. I want. You want to catch up on your TV shows? Get on there and run, run and watch your own TV shows and just turn it up. It, you you can do that in your own personal gym. That stuff that that stuff that you want to watch. This takes time out of your day. If there's something you want to catch up on. Now you can do it on your time while you're doing cardio versus if you wanted to watch it at your gym, you can't. Uh, or it's really inconvenient because of, you know, you're watching on a tiny screen on your phone or something. Well, here you can do it how you want it. And that's pretty amazing. Uh, it's pretty awesome to be able to do that. Uh, our kids can come down here and work out. We don't have to pay for child care. And now we can teach our kids how to do this stuff, teach them how to be healthy, teach them how to... Uh, how to work out proper, how to get strong and all of that. We don't have to worry about liability. We don't have to worry about child care. I don't have to worry about anyone else's snotty nose kids. I don't have to worry about what other kids are saying and parenting, you know, other people's kids and whatnot. It's, it's awesome to be able to bring your kids down into an environment like this. Or if they don't want to work out and you want to hang out, I've had my son come down here and do homework. Uh, it's just, there's so many options. Um, our dogs, you know, everyone's dogs come on a beautiful day like today. There's Bruce right there. Um, our dogs come down here, hang out with us. They love to be around us. We love to be around them. They come down. They don't really, eh, they might get in the way a little bit, but we've never heard a dog and with the equipment. Um, you're always conscious when they're around, but typically they're laying in the sun or they're playing or running around. So it's awesome to have our dogs around. Uh, we don't have to deal with the locker rooms. You know, the bat, we have a bathroom here bathroom you can do what you want to do you don't have to use someone else's bathroom you don't have to deal with other people's nastiness uh we keep ourselves clean and you know we obviously can use the the bathrooms in our own house but we are able to uh, if we need to go here we don't have to wait on people we don't just don't have to deal with the nastiness of a locker room um you wear what you want if you want to uh you know, if you want to work out in a sports bra, if you're a girl, 
and you don't want people looking at you, no, well, having your own home gym is the way to do it. Uh, if you, you know, you want to wear what you want to wear as a guy, you can. You don't have to worry about people looking at you and watching you. You, you can feel comfortable in your own skin. You don't want to work out shirt off. But if you don't, if you would feel subconscious doing that in a gym, you don't have to worry about it here. You can do what you want to do. Um, your equipment is respected. You see, you guys know the gym. You see people doing rack pulls and dropping weights and dropping dumbbells from eight feet in the air. Uh, just doing, I, we've seen some of the most ridiculous stuff in the gym over the past couple decades. Uh, it's amazing. And so it's nice to be in your own gym where your gym equipment's respected and things aren't getting str- thrown around like they shouldn't be uh, where everything's nice. You don't have to deal with those. And, and the biggest thing is, not the biggest thing, but it's huge, is the gym bros. No gym bros here. None of the nutty guys. None of the guys screaming. None of the the guys flexing. We don't have a mirror. You want to talk about a time saver. One of the biggest time savers you could do to get people in and out of the gym is take all the mirrors down. Because finally people will stop spending time looking at themselves and they'll get to working on the weights. If A, a gym with no mirrors is, has an entirely different culture and climate than a gym with mirrors. I promise you, everything is much different. Having no mirrors is such a benefit. It is not a negative. It is a benefit. And not having to deal with the gym bros looking at themselves in the mirror is so amazing. There's no selfies. There's no videos. No one's setting up videos to, to watch themselves lift. Ridiculousness. We don't deal with any of that stuff. It's so nice to not have to deal with gym bros or the new gym gals, whatever you want to call them. These fitness girls that just are in love with themselves and can't stop taking pictures of themselves. Uh, not having to deal with the people is fantastic. Um, you know, I get the guys lying about how much they lift. You don't have to listen to those conversations. I, I hate that stuff. Um, you know, it does take a lot of work to keep your gym clean. We, we, I shop back nearly every time I work out because you know, this floor doesn't hide anything. And so it, it, costs a, I mean, it costs a lot of time to keep it clean, not necessarily a lot of money, but there's time. You can put chalk out, get chalk everywhere. Just vacuum it up. It's your gym. A lot of gyms don't allow chalk, but I mean, you do what you want to do in your own gym. It's so nice. Uh, I've kind of talked about some of this stuff before, but I thought I would throw it together in a video and show the new expanded gym, um, show the new kind of organization to it. One thing I do love is we do lunges. You know, this is a finished concrete floor and it's slick, very slick. You get water on it and it's so easy to slide. And so we've done lunges up and down this part of the gym and you will slide on your sweat or just some sort of moisture if it gets on this floor it's so slippery and being able to now if i want to move this bench out of the way i can do lunges up and down this bay with weight on my back and not have to worry about slipping and blowing my knee out it's so nice Uh, that's one thing that is definitely nice about having this and then being able to uh, one of the things that you can do with the home gym that we do now is it sounds silly, but we do workout videos. You know, people do battle rope videos, you know, 20-minute cardio videos. We'll get down and we'll do those. We'll do um, the Growing Gananas girl. I've done her workouts. They are so hard. My wife does them. The girls do them. And we'll put them up on the TVs and do those videos. And having a space with mats now instead of the hard floor is much nicer. Your legs have better grip. Uh, it's, uh, we've, you know, it's, it's, it's actually cleaner because we vacuum these spaces better than the, than the concrete. So it's nice to have this big space to do kind of an aerobics kind of style workout. Uh, we really enjoy that. That's another thing is you, you know, just plan your organization and don't neglect your free space when you're building your gym out because you're actually going to want it. You're going to want some space to do jumping jacks, to do jump rope, to do an aerobics video, which <laughs> sounds funny, but and they're hard. They're hard doing jumping jacks for 20 minutes. So they, these guys do those jump rope videos, and we've tried jump rope videos. Uh, like I said, the battle rope videos where you do all the seated battle rows and the daggers and all those stuff. Uh, man, that stuff gets hard. And so it's nice to have a free space and be organized on, on what you're doing. And I was going to show, like, uh, you know, we're organized. You know, I ran Conduit, and I don't like running my TVs off of Wi-Fi. So... I run actual Ethernet to, uh, we have a switch. I run Ethernet to our switch. 
And over here, if you look, there's no wires. And it's because I do the work um, to be organized enough to try to be clean enough in what we do so that I run my power and I run Ethernet so that I don't have to run my TVs on Wi-Fi uh, because I've had just so much trouble with that in the past. That everything's hardwired, but it's a pain in the butt to be organized and to have things clean, but it's worth it. It's worth spending the time and the, and the little bit of extra money uh, to get things run properly. I'm, I ran everything to junction boxes and ran conduit down to this TV and, and I've all that, done all that. I've, I, I do all that stuff just because I, I can appreciate having a clean, organized gym. And as you plan it out, try to be clean and organized because I think it pays dividends. If you have any, I've rambled for 30 minutes. This, uh, you know, it's a huge video. I should have said in the beginning this was going to be so long, but I apologize. I just thought I'd give an update. If anyone has any questions, please let me know. I try to answer everything in the comments. Um, you know, I don't get a lot of YouTube comments, which is fine. Uh, I don't necessarily need or want them. But I try to be honest with everything and answer people's questions uh, because a lot of people have given me some good suggestions and people have some darn good questions. And I certainly... Uh, don't mind paying it forward. I've made my mistakes in this gym and my mistakes with my money and I don't want other people to make them either. Uh, uh, I just don't, you know, if I can prevent you guys from chasing uh, good dollars with bad dollars, uh, I'm glad to help um, because I already spent the money and, you know, someone's going to put out a video one day that's going to help me out and not spend the wrong amount of money. I've certainly been helped out by a lot of YouTube videos, people showing how to do stuff. So I'm trying to pay it forward. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I appreciate all the kind remarks people tell me. They'll have a great gym. Man, you guys don't have to do that, but I, I certainly appreciate it. It's awesome. Uh, gym, you know, gym people are the best and the worst. The gym bros are the worst. But the honest gym guys who are in it to work out and who love to lift weights and who love to, to have a passion for being a little bit competitive with themselves and others, but also respectful and they're not, they're not the people who aren't in love with themselves, but are in love with working out. Man, they're some of the most fun guys to be around. And so I appreciate all of you guys who are, you know, comment on my videos because you're the guys that I, that we hang around with. Um, because those are the guys that are fun and we all have the same passion and the same hobby. So take care. God bless. Um, I'll post a video soon on the stairway, Jim Tan Laundry over there. And, uh, uh, I hope everyone takes care, and if you have any questions, let me know.